Hey guys, this is Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can migrate your existing Home Assistant installation on a Raspberry Pi to a virtual machine. I'm going to give you two methods, the Home Assistant method and the Home Assistant Supervised method. In the first method, we're also going to install HASS OS. In the other method, we're going to use Ubuntu as our operating system. So our Home Assistant consists of three basic components, the Home Assistant Core, the Supervisor and HASS OS. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below so you can skip through the parts that you're interested in and you can look at the installation method that you prefer. The Home Assistant Core is the core application that runs on Python. The Supervisor enables you to do all the extra things like adding the add-ons and it simplifies the user interface for newcomers. And the Home Assistant Operating System is the operating system so you don't need to worry about uh, installing uh, Windows, Linux or things like that. The main benefit of Supervisor is that you can keep everything up to date without actually touching the command line anymore. You don't really need to know all of that. You can also install things separately. For example, the Home Assistant Core, you can install that in Docker container, but I would recommend that only if you're at more of an expert level. So why use a virtual machine at all? Why not just use a Raspberry Pi? The main reason why is for expandability. So if you remember my previous video, I had a Raspberry Pi 32 gigs and I had to flash it and get it all installed. With these virtual machines, you can expand the sort of storage capacity, you can expand the RAM allocation, and you can have Home Assistant running on a much more powerful machine. It's gonna enable you to uh, do things much quicker and have a bigger instance of Home Assistant as you keep adding on add-ons and different separate things. It is also easier to manage things like backups, snapshots, and restores with VMs. So you can just take copies of their image and store them off-site, for example, on a hard disk somewhere else. It is advisable to have all these VMs on a static IP address. So every time you reboot, you get the same IP address. So you don't need to go and reconfigure things like your app and other things like your MQTT broker, for example. Now go to the Home Assist installation page, we're gonna link below for your convenience and scroll down until you find OVA. So OVA is what I'm going to use for my QNAP virtualization station. Okay, first thing to do in Home Assistant, let's go to the Supervisor tab and let's take a snapshot of the current system. Here you can create a snapshot, so just name it, for example, Migration. Ensure you've got full snapshot selected and tap Create. Click on your Migration full snapshot ensure everything has been taken and download snapshot. Now at this stage, once it has been downloaded, you are ready to unplug and turn this off. But please keep this handy because if in case something does go wrong, you can just plug this back in and you're up and running and you can try next time. Now log into your QNAP box and go to virtualization station free. If you haven't got it, you can download it easily. As you can see here from the screen, I have three instances of Home Assistant, three different VMs created, but I can only have one at a time running because that's sort of a, uh, the max capacity that my NAS can handle. But that will depend on the machine that you're installing this onto and how much resources you can allocate to each of these VMs. So I've been reading in the blogs and it seems like two cores and two gigs of RAM should be plenty, but you can experiment with giving more or less depending on your circumstances. I would also recommend at least 30 or 40 gigs of flexible storage. Now, navigate to import, import VM. We're going to import it from our PC because that's where the file has been downloaded. Now we need to give our VM a name. You can call this whatever you want. Uh, maybe you want to call it Home Assistant Experiment. Recommend no spaces in the VM name. Now you can pick the number of CPU cores. As I said, I'm going to stick with two. And same for the memory, I'm going to st stick with two gigs. You can add a description, that's optional. In terms of the VM location, this is where the image file is going to be saved on your um, QNAP or any type of uh, host that you're actually using. So this will, the file will be on your physical host. So I'm gonna pick a folder that I created called Home Assistant. And now we're ready to go. So you can 
click start the virtual machine when the import is complete but i'll um, wait uh, to do that so i'm just going to click import and let this run so now you can see on the top here i have this background task where my vm is being created and i'll have my image file which will exist in that folder now you can feel free to take a copy of that image and put it somewhere so before you actually uh, upgrade to the new version or you do something that's a bit experimental in home assistant you've got a copy somewhere else you can also use snapshot features within vms itself i'll show you how to do that so in your vm list go to the cogwheel settings and go to snapshot and here you can create a new snapshot of the whole vm you can just click take a snapshot you can have it scheduled so maybe every month every week you can take a snapshot of your home assistant vm now I'll, like, while this is loading i'm going to give you a few uh, commands that you can actually use yourself to control your vms so you can do two things to uh, stop a vm from running you can use this button here which will be the suspend button so if you click on the suspend button you will see this turning from green to orange and you'll also see your cpu and memory changing so i'm going to suspend that now i'm going to say okay so now that has been suspended you can see the status here now you still can't change things many settings so if you go to settings even if it's suspended you can't change the disk size so for you to do that you're going to actually need to turn it off completely now one thing to note when you suspend resuming is going to be a lot faster but if you actually power it off it's going to take a bit longer maybe a couple of minutes to actually spin up again so if you're really not thinking of using this vm anymore or it was just a one-off experiment then power it off but if you, you you're going to switch around between vms then probably just use suspend to power off go to the power control button click it and click force shutdown so just say okay and once that has been done which has been done now you can actually go to the settings and now you can actually change things um, so if you wanted to change for example to clicking here in settings uh, you can change uh, the memory allocation the course basically you can change anything network se network settings uh, usb settings so you can uh, down the line change the capacity of your vm very very quickly you will save it and then you just turn it back on and everything should be working if you want to you can take a backup before doing any change uh, that will be a, a good approach and now you can see the vm has been created so before we actually start it up i'm going to show you how you can create this on an ubuntu server because the after we've created a vm the steps are going to be exactly the same so let's jump into that let's see actually uh, understand how that works now the first thing to do now is actually pick the version of ubuntu server we want to install the latest version at the time of recording is 20.04.1 lts long-term support but i'm going to use the uh, previous version 18.04 okay so once you've downloaded the file go to one of your folders in your qnamp and upload the file so as you can see here i've uploaded my iso file and remember the location because we're going to need it later now go back to your virtualization station and we can start creating the vm so tap create here we can put a name so we can call this home assistant bantu and i'm going to scroll down in here and i'm actually going to pick the version 18.04 so this is one of the reasons why i'm using this version i don't know if the 20 uh the other version say the most recent version is going to work it might work but i guess it's up to you to experiment so i'm going to tap on the 18.04 i'm going to keep this uh, as it is uh, just for consistency i might wrap this up a bit perfect now we're going to need a uh, hard disk storage so i'm going to go with uh, my 30 30 gigs and i'm going to use the uh, hard disk image again i'm going to pick the same folder as before so i'm using home assistant you can use any folder you wish put a thing you have enough disk space on it 
and that's fantastic. Click OK. Now you're going to need to find a CD image. So the CD image is the image of the operating system. And that's what we downloaded previously. So click on Browse. Um, my file is in the download folder and pick this file, click OK. And now we're ready to go. In terms of the uh, connection, the network, I'm using my own, uh, the same virtual switch free that I've been using for all of them, but you can set this up to whatever you need. To so click OK, and this is gonna start off the process of the creation of the Ubuntu box. Now, the main difference between this type of installation and the one before is that we actually need to configure the operating system. So we need a little bit more in terms of things that we need to set up, but you have more flexibility. It's gonna depend on your preference between uh, if you want the operating system, the Has OS, or if you want Ubuntu, that's really up to you. But I'm showing you both methods for sort of uh, your knowledge. So let's jump into the uh, virtualization station and let's tap here and this could open another window and this is the window over here and now we can start actually configuring a few things so it's very simple don't be scared by the command line look of it but basically it's up and down and enter and i'm going to select english uk so i'm going down one enter now uh, there's any installer update available so i'm going to update to the new installer and I'm going to so go arrow up and enter. So that's going to download for us and it's going to install. At this moment, don't touch anything. If you would tap enter, that will cancel the update. So give it a moment and uh, it should be back up and running. So you're going to change your keyboard configuration here. You can either keep it as uh, English US or you can change it. I'm just going to keep it as it is for now. So I'm going to go done. Uh, this is your uh, IP address that you can see 192.168.1.152 and uh, this, so this could be quite important because now we're going to SSH into the machine and we're going to need to keep a note of that. So here tap enter, uh, you can ignore the proxy, so just go done, done. So here we're going to use the uh, entire disk, which is fine. So we're not going to do anything else. I'm not doing much configuration wise, but I guess up to you, you can change this. Um, so it's telling us how we are partitioning the file system. Well, fine, we'll keep it as it is. And this is a destructive action, fine, because might, we might lose data. But anyway, this is an empty installation and it's on a VM, so we can't, uh, it can't delete stuff outside of it. So now we pick our name, so we can pick a username, uh, server name and a password. So once that's all completed, tap done. So we go say install open SSH, we gotta tick this. So just tap on enter. Uh, we don't have an SSH identity to import, so I'm just gonna go done. And here are extra things, extra features you can install, um, up to you. I'm just gonna skip this step and I'm gonna go done. So here we go. So it's all uh, installing, it's running in the background. You can go here to see the full log or you just let it, let it run basically. So if you've been enjoying this video and you get any value, please like and consider subscribing to the channel for much more content like this. Okay, so Ubuntu completed the installation, we rebooted it, and now we're ready to start installing Home Assistant. So first of all, we're gonna to need to SSH into the machine. So to do that, you need to open a terminal or a Microsoft DOS if you're using Windows. Okay, so remember the username you created at the beginning? So we're going to need that. So in my example, I'm going to type SSH Smart Home Makers, which is my username, and then add 192.168.1.152 so I'm going to enter and now I'm going to put my password in okay so now we're connected in the machine so now we need to execute some curl commands to actually install home assistant I'm going to leave these commands in the description down below feel free just to copy paste them 
uh, into the terminal like I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna do sudo minus i, and I put my password in. So I've authenticated now as root. So that's gonna enable me to all of these, it's like an administrator basically. So once that's done, I'm gonna go back to my commands and apt get repository. So I'm gonna to get to repository universe, type that in. So universe is already enabled, which is fantastic. In my example, I'm going to update my installer, the apt get installer. This example, there is an update, so I'm getting the latest security update and all of that good stuff. Next command is the apt get install. So in this example, we're going to be installing uh, one of the first components. So it's downloading things and just let it, uh, let it complete and then we'll be ready for the next phase. Now we're going to get docker. So we run this curl command now. So we install the docker. So let's let that, let that go again. Hey, so we've got our last command and this command we can actually get the home assistant supervised copy. So we're gonna paste that in and let it run basically. This will run probably essentially in the background. So you don't need to worry about it too much. But at a certain stage, you can go to the IP address, actually look if Home Assistant is actually um, starting up or not. Okay, so now at this stage, we've got our usual home screen greeting us, but we're not going to fill in this information, but we're going to restore from a previous snapshot. This is going to give us the actual ability to reuse our username and password that we had in our previous Home Assistant installation. So click on this previous snapshot, and now you've got to go and look for your snapshot on your PC. So it's going to look for the file that we used and it's going to ask you what things do you want to restore and what things you don't want to restore. Now bear in mind this will depend on how many add-ons you have and this might be, uh, it might not work, it might not work. So I do uh, recommend that you go and actually check them one by one. And yeah, I've seen a 95% success rate. So nearly everything that I migrated across worked. So anyway, so just click restore selected and go restore. And now the restore is in process. You can have a look at the logs if you wish. This is going to take maybe a couple of minutes, up to five, up to 10 minutes, depending on how big your installation is. But once that is done, you can go back to the, uh, um, your URL. You can type everything in and you're ready to go. Basically, you can log in your previous username and password and start testing the system out. So if you want to see five interesting tips of how you can use automations in Home Assistant, I can link a video here and you can click on it. You can go check that one out. Now, you need to tell me when do you have your Home Assistant installed and are you planning to migrate it or not? Leave that below in the comment description below because I'll be interested to know.